Welcome to Freedom Talk. I am so excited to be here with Alexis Wolfer of The Beauty Bean. Hello. Hi. Hi. She's tuning in from California. I'm tuning in from snowy Toronto. We were just talking about Mexico. So, I mean, we're, we're, we're definitely living the freedom lifestyle. But I'm so excited to have you here with us. Thank you again for joining. Of course, thank you so much for letting me be a very small part of this amazing project. Oh, you're so beautiful, and I love everything that you do, but I would love for you to start off by by telling us first about you, and then we're just so curious about how you launched your business and, and what your plans are, because it's awesome. <laughs> thank you. Um, it's a really convoluted story, but I actually have my Master's in Human Rights and Women's Studies from Columbia. I thought that I was going to work in the Peace Corps, or maybe join the, like work for the UN or do something in international human rights. And I had lived in Tanzania working at a women's empowerment group after college and was just so passionate about these really heavy human rights issues. And it wasn't until I was in graduate school where, you know, I was simultaneously working at Lucky Magazine. I'd always loved the beauty and fashion world, but I really thought that that was just going to be like a light hobby of mine and it was just kind of something I was doing while I was in school and it was fun and glamorous but you know I wanted to do something really meaningful with my life and that didn't involve fashion and beauty <laughs> and at the time at least right at the and time. I had a graduate school professor who ended up being my thesis advisor who studied media and human rights issues she was like, why don't you find a way to marry your interests? Like you love the beauty and fashion stuff. Like that doesn't just need to be a hobby. And I was like, but I want to do like real human rights work. You're you know? And, yeah. And I ended up writing my graduate school thesis on women's magazines and their influence on body image and eating disorders. And it was really the first time that I understood that the right to love yourself and to treat your own body with love and respect is the ultimate human right. Because unless you can treat yourself with love and respect, it is extraordinarily difficult to ask others to do the same. Mm -hmm. And for me, I had had an eating disorder in my past, which I didn't at all see as being a human rights issue at the time, but you know, I do see it that way now. Mm -hmm. And so I ended up writing my graduate school thesis on this, kind of was in the right place at the right time at Lucky Magazine when everything was kind of folding at Condé Nast and they were letting a lot of people go and a lot of people had left Lucky to go and start Stylecaster, which was one of the first online fashion magazines that was really doing big, bold things. And it was a real magazine that happened to be online as opposed to blogs that right. were kind of around at the time, but like not huge. And I was hired as one of their first beauty editors. And it was a job that I was wholly unqualified for, but, you know, just kind of dove into and I learned so much. And it was the perfect opportunity to be involved in this like startup mentality where you get to like do so much, but I was learning so much and I was really loving being in the beauty and fashion world and knowing at the same time that I was working really hard to make a difference. And it. so during that same process, I was kind of working on the early iterations of the beauty bean, which ended up launching in 2009. Wow. And the idea was for it to be an online women's magazine that would cover everything you wanted to get in your monthly glossies. So your fitness, your nutrition, your beauty, your makeup tips, celebrity, etc. but all in a really positive, empowering way. So we wouldn't cover anything weight loss related. We wouldn't airbrush any of our models. We would use regular girls in our photography. We would really select women with a keen eye towards diversity of body shape, size, and color. And all of our content would be positive. So Throughout kind of the iterations of it, it evolved a bit, and we no longer really do so much celebrity stuff because it's very hard to do that always in a positive right. way. Um, we don't really do much fashion anymore because I find fashion to be something that, you know, it only comes in limited sizes, and right. it by nature kind of excludes a lot of people, whereas beauty, everybody can wear a red lipstick, yes. and everybody can experiment with green eyeliner if they want to, and I love that about what we do, and so... That was in 2009, and the Beauty Beans just continued to grow since then. I now do a lot of TV content for beauty and lifestyle brands, so I do a monthly segment on NBC in New York. I do some stuff with the doctors and E! News out here in L.A., um, and then I also wrote a beauty book. So it's a beauty cookbook called The Recipe for Radiance, Discover Beauty's Best Kept Secrets in Your Kitchen, wow. and it's a 
beauty cookbook, if you will, that takes you into your kitchen and it's half recipes that promote beauty from within and half recipes for topical homemade remedies all using food. Wow. And that came out this past April. Oh, and I have another book coming out in December. Yay. Well, we can... And that is my life story in two wow. minutes. <laughs> well, that is, that's sad. I know there's a lot more that goes into that, but we can't wait to get our hands on your book for sure. Now, oh, take you. us through, I mean, our community is entrepreneurs who, you know, they might still be in their corporate jobs and, and, and dreaming of their, their freedom projects, or they might be already entrepreneurs who are on route to truly living out their full purpose, or they might have made it. Someone like yourself, I look at as, wow, you know, she's made it. She's living her passion. She's leaving a positive mark on the world. What advice do you have for those individuals who might just be starting on their freedom journey? And that's where I guess it's always a journey, but some of the most hardest moments that then help us grow as entrepreneurs are at the very beginning. So talk to us a little bit further back, you know, because it's been so how many years, six years now that you've been a wicked goddess entrepreneur, but how Thank is it you. at the beginning and what tips can you give us? First of all, like it is hard, you know, <laughs> entrepreneurship is not for everybody and right. that's okay. Yeah. Um, I think it's really difficult, especially at the beginning to know that you're on the right path. And there were certainly a lot of times that I wasn't sure. There's still times when I'm like, what am I going to do next? I'm bored. I need something right. new or you know, that kind of a thing. I think it, like you said, it's always a journey. Um, I think it is essential that you have people in your life who act as your cheerleaders and that you have people in your life who act as your realists awesome. and you need them both. Um, I am extraordinarily lucky that I have a dad who's an entrepreneur. He always from a very young age had said, you know, find what you love to do and you'll find a way to make money doing it. Like just focus on that. And I think that that is an extraordinarily powerful lesson for a young girl in particular to hear. Yeah. Um, and it's one that I hope that more young girls continue to hear because I think that you really can find a way to be successful doing almost anything. I agree. Um, and I think it's important that I had him when I was starting the business because I was able to, he was the first person who I would call when I had those moments of being like stuck and I'm like, crap, I'm flowing through my savings and what am I doing? And he'd be like, you know, at the time, I think I was like 25 and he'd be like, you're 25 and you're not going to have a savings account. Like screw you. And he'd like hang up on me. <laughs> like whatever. Or I'd call and be like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know if I could do this. He's like, you can do anything you set your mind to. And he would hang up the phone. And I think that that's such an essential person to have in your corner. That being said, I think it's equally important to have the person who's in your corner who can give you the tough love. Yeah. And you can be the one that's like, mm, not sure about that idea. Have you thought about this? Love. Because I think you really, really need those people too in order to make sure that you're on a path that's sustainable and doable. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I love that. And and it's so important because the people that we surround ourselves with, our environment, I mean, they have an impact, but when yes. you're especially an entrepreneur who doesn't have a team of people that they work with all the mm -hmm. time, I mean, exactly what you said, straight on. Now talk to us about, I guess, a daily feel awesome recipe that you have, a ritual that you have that maybe... Yeah our entrepreneurs can also incorporate into their schedule, into their routine, into their practice so that, you know, I look outside, I wake up, it's snowing and it's like this for six months, right? Yeah, so move I, to the sunshine I, would be tip number one. <laughs> okay, that's definitely on my list. <laughs> I think it's really a matter of finding out what it is. What are the things that make you happy? What are the things that you like to do? For me, I love being outside and I love being active. And that's not to say I'm not a marathon runner, I'm not a world class athlete, but you know, I like going to a spin class yeah. or I like going rollerblading by the beach or going for a hike with my dog. Those things like really, really ground me and make me feel centered. And I find that to be really essential. So Know, making time for those things. So I often schedule my workouts in my calendar. So I have to do them. It becomes like an appointment with myself that I won't cancel. Yeah. So, and I especially like gyms or workout classes that charge you a cancellation fee oh, as much yes. as they like really annoy you when you yeah. actually really have to cancel. But those really make sure that you show up. And that's it. really, really great for me. I totally so I'd say that. 
Um, and it's going to be something different for everybody, whether it's, you know, you feel great when you get to watch your weekly favorite TV show, or you love going out to the movies, or you like having a date night with your partner or whatever that is, just make sure that you know what those things are and schedule them. I would also say, and I know that this is very much colored by the fact that my focus is really in beauty and food, but make sure that you're drinking enough water. Yes. You know, there's nothing that zaps your energy levels more than being dehydrated, even well before you actually feel thirsty. There's also nothing that makes your skin look crappy faster than not drinking enough water. So just make sure that you keep, I usually have like a huge giant half gallon mason jar by my desk and I just kind of sip at it all day and I try to make sure that I fill it up at least twice throughout the day. And I find that really helpful. Awesome. Or put on some hot lipstick, right? Yes. To or put on some mood. hot lipstick. <laughs> You know, whatever works for you. <laughs> exactly. I love that. That's beautiful. And is there something that you do to to fuel your creativity on a daily basis other than those things that you mentioned? Is there any regime that you have that's really worked for you as an entrepreneur? So I don't do anything really consistently. And I think that that fuels my creativity, mm. if that makes sense. Like it. So like I said, like I love being active and I do something active almost every day. But it's not ever the same thing every day. So sometimes it's a spin class, sometimes it's Pilates, sometimes it's a walk, sometimes, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, reading, I think, is essential. I think it is particularly important to read things that are outside of your area of business. Yeah. So sure, there's a time and a place for me to read business or entrepreneurship books or things on the media. But there's nothing like a great novel or a book of short stories or something, a magazine that has nothing to do with what you do. I think that's really essential. I think it just continues to expand your worldview. And I think as much as it's important to surround yourself with people who know your business and who can help you in that, I think it's also really important to have friends and people <laughs> in your life who do things that aren't at all related. Like, I would say yeah. that the vast majority of my friends like have no idea how I pay rent. They're like <laughs> completely unsure what I do that's, for a living. Yeah, that's a and great And I think point. that there's something really great about that. I love that. That's actually a really interesting point because usually though we tend to read the same things or surround ourselves with similar individuals, but then we're always stuck in that similar circle. But yeah, hey, what and I we think that it's so important to have that. I have a group of mastermind women who yeah. I meet with, we used to meet every week. Now it's closer to every month because we're all so busy, but that, you know, are always on my like quick response emails and they know my business really well and we help each other out and we hold each other accountable. And that is vital, yeah. but I think it's equally important to have people in your life who are doing things that are totally different. Yeah. And of course you have to respect those things and be engaged in those things. But one of my best friends is an artist who makes all feminist art and so we certainly have that overlap of being really interested in gender and body image, right. but we do things in very different ways. And there's something really powerful about that. Oh, I love that. You're amazing. And talk to us about freedom. So thank you for rocking your shirt. As you already know, all the profits, yay. <laughs> all the profits from the freedom gear go back to a heart melting cause. We're actually looking to um, for the next beautiful cause. But talk to us what freedom means to you because it's different for everyone. But what does it mean for you? So I know I sent you an email with something that I thought about freedom, but I'm not even 100% sure what I wrote. But I would say that freedom for me is really centered in the ability to do what I love, to treat my body with love and respect, and to have the ability to make those choices on my own, to be able to live a life that is of my choosing. And that doesn't mean one that is selfish, because I think that that's something that is often conflated with choice or this idea of female entrepreneurship in general. Um, but I think it has a lot to do with giving back and being authentic and just having the choice of what my day to day looks like and what my year to year looks like and what my path looks like. And, you know, sometimes that means like when you were saying earlier about having, you know, the ability or the income to be able to do certain things. While I think that that's amazing, I think it's also really amazing to have the choice to be like, you know what, I'm going to turn down that job so that I have a week that I can just kind of chill out. Yeah. Or I have a week that I can go down and visit my parents and spend time with them and know that I don't need to work while I'm there. And sure, that might mean foregoing X number of thousands of dollars in income, but to have the ability to make that choice 
to me is freedom. That's beautiful. And you're beautiful. Or even if we want to go to Tulum, right? Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, let's go. <laughs> let's go. I love it. Well, thank you so much. Where can we find you? So, if we want to connect more with you, follow you, social media, website, how can our community find you? So, you can always find me at thebeautybean.com. Um, I am on every social media platform as Alexis Wolfer, and we have a, the Beauty Bean handle for everything as well. Um, you can get my book at Amazon, on Amazon or at Barnes & Noble or any major retail bookstore. Um, yeah, you can find me at all those places. <laughs> Amazing. I love it. Well, we'll be looking for you. I'm going to go grab your book. And again, truly an honor. Thank you Thank so much you. for spending time with me and, uh, and rocking your shirt. Can't wait to keep following your work. Thank you. Thank you so much for everything that you're doing. This is a really amazing project. Oh, thank you, Sudi. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.